Tommy, I, I want to get your take. Do you think, um, do you think Filoni and uh, Favreau, John Favreau, do you think they wanted Grogu in the show this season? Or do you think they were like, their, their hand was kind of forced by Disney because Grogu is so popular? Well, I'm sure there's a combination of A and B. I mean, I'm sure, like, you cannot, you can't put him on the bench for too long, right? I mean, like, we left season two thinking, man, probably season three will be a cut, you know, we'll get a, like an episode or two of him and Luke, right? Like training and Din having to go ask for advice from Luke or like checking in on him. And instead, it was half an episode of Book of Boba Fett. And then we already, you know, and then the second they were back together, I don't know what your guys' reaction were, the reaction of the people with me and people at my work were like, Oh, good. Thank God he's back. So I, you know, I I don't know. I guess it's kind of one of those things where I just think there's a mandate certainly to deliver on these popular characters and like, you know, especially when they're even, even if they're, you know, age wise adults, you know, we we meet Grogu and he's 52 or whatever. It's like he's seen as a baby, right? So he, he can't ever come under too much harm. And so if that's the case, as long as he's alive, he's going to be on in these shows. He's going to be on a show. There's no there's no way they're not going to do that because he's way too popular and he sells way too much merchandise. So yeah. I, I know that seems cynical, but I also think it's right. You know, I think it's correct. Yeah, I Based would have, I mean, it's in, a, in a perfect world, I would have made him go away yeah. for most of season three and then sure. maybe have something play out that was similar to when Luke was training with Yoda and realized his friends were in trouble and he had to leave before his training was complete in order to help them and see that play out on a, from a different end with Luke trying to convince Grogu that you need to stay, you're not ready for this, and then have hey. Grogu leave to go help. Like I thought that, w- that would have been yeah. cool to see that dynamic play out. But, yeah, that, yeah. Tommy, you are 100% right. Like that is, you're not, you're not going to sideline your star player. You're just No, not. and I think, I think narratively it does still work. It's like, you know, there's a lot like watching Grogu evolve as a character is fun. The problem is he evolves so slowly that it's hard to do in a, right. like a narrative story over a season of television mm-hmm. unless you time jump. Now, if right. this, if season four of Mandalorian jumps, I mean, granted, they also can't time jump too much because then we're into Force Awakens. So it's like I mean, season two is five years from now. And I think even the, yeah. like Favreau in interviews is like, not 100% sure when his show is taking place. He's like, I know it's after Return of the Jedi and before Force Awakens, but maybe it's two years after or four years after. You know, it's like kind of, yeah. it's kind of up in the air, so. That's funny, yeah. yeah. Anyway. Uh, speaking of that, any uh, have you guys had any time to reflect and think about where, any crazy predictions for season four? Think it's going to be, uh, think it's going to be, uh, they're going to stick to the Bo-Katan storyline or are they going to kind of go back to no. Dinja? I think it'll be I think it'll be Din and Grogu again. I think they'll start off doing missions of the week, and I think they'll introduce uh, probably some of that, maybe maybe some of the other Shadow Council members that aren't so directly related to to Thrawn. You know, there was seven or eight people there. I think you know, there's other warlords. There's also we have Elia Kane still on uh, Coruscant, you know, running around with, with the with the cloning knowledge. Presumably she might get pulled into some things. And, you know, there are other characters that we still could revisit. And I can imagine, you know, I'm sure that there are legends, books, and comics they can pull adventures from or kind of patch together to make these new... I, I my, my guess would be... I, will, I love the idea that Sean had. I think it was Sean. I'm not sure if it was you, Josh. Forgive me. Of having... Boba Fett and Fennec Shand and Lift, Lift. and Din Djarin and Grogu be this kind of like Fantastic Four bounty hunting team. I think that's really fun, and you know that's what that show started off as, and people liked it. It was a western that was like a bad guy of the week western or mission of the week western. Sure, it was made fun of like for how formulaic it could be, but it was also really entertaining. So I, you know, yeah. If the movies are coming back and we have other shows, I'm okay with you know they're just being a world set or a show set in the world of Star Wars that just kind of pays off the world more than it necessarily pays off a, a, a satisfying <laughs> saga in one season so yeah no I, I would love season four to be um because now thrawn will be back yeah because he's showing i don't know how big of a part he's gonna play in ahsoka but what i would love to see is that uh din boba and fennec are sh- hunting down all these imperial warlords but it's Grand Admiral Thrawn who's selling them out because he knows he's got to consolidate power. Oh, that's and so funny, it's like, yeah. 
you know, they'd be like, I, you know, he's sort of tipping, he's he's tipping them off to where these hey. guys are, and so you know, there's something weird going on. They can't figure out what it is, and he's the one pulling the strings to be like, all right, now all my hey. competition is out, and then that to me would be a really good jumping off point to the movie because now he is in 100% control. That's yeah, I like that. That's evil. 